Python tuples. Why are you even a thing? Because you're pretty much the same as a list, like almost exactly the same. Watch this. Here's how I create a list, and here's how you create a tuple. They're exactly the same, come on. I mean, I know. To create them, I had to use a bracket to create a list, open and closing. Beyond that, they're the same. They hold an ordered list of data, strings, integers. Why is Python doing this to us? Just to be confusing, to be difficult? Because I only ever use list. I never use tuples. So in this video, I want to go on a journey. I want to figure out why is there a tuple? Why is it even a thing? Why does it exist? It's going to be a small journey, I think. Get your coffee ready. Let's do this. Now, just to show you I'm not crazy, let me print the type of these data types. Run that code and bam, I told you. Class, list. Class, tuple. So I Googled it, asked ChatGPT, and asked my Discord. And there's one key difference between a list and a tuple. Immutable. You can't mute tuples, but you can mute lists. But now I'm talking about tuples and you can hear me. Immutable, not mutable. All right, Nick, so what I wanna do there is like do a mute thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's stupid, but we should play with it. So it turns out immutable is just a fancy word for you can't change it. Whereas mutable means you can change it. So a list you can change. So let's try it out. Let's change the value in our list. We'll change Bernard to Chuck. We'll say index zero equals Chuck. And we'll print that list to see what it looks like. Nailed it. It changed. Mutable. Let's try to change our tuple. Same process. Call the zero index and have that equal Chuck. And we'll try to print it out. Eh, can't do it. It's immutable. Can't touch this. Sorry. I had to do it. So we could stop there. Video over, case closed. But if you're like me, you might be wondering, so what? <laughs> so what if you can't change it? I still don't see the reason, the use case. Because it still seems like we're trying to overcomplicate something that should be very simple. Just make it a list. The list does everything. So I dove deeper. But real quick, before we overcomplicate things with tuples and lists, let me tell you something that's not complicated. Sponsor this video, 3CX. 3CX is something you want to play with. Because haven't you always wanted your own phone system? Yes, you have. You're about to get one for free. 3CX has a new thing. It's called 3CX Startup. Now in the phone system world, things can get pretty complex. Like it was my whole job. <laughs> that's how much of a pain it was. But here, you get the whole shebang. Live chat, video chat, a phone system, and it's in the cloud. Like legit, they're doing this, and I don't know how they can do this, but it's free forever for up to 10 users. <laughs> like seriously, just try this out, it's really fun. Putting your own phone system right now, take you five minutes. Nothing makes you feel more professional than having live chat on your website. Let's say you're a person in IT, and you wanna have a killer resume portfolio website. Imagine if you had live chat on there, <laughs> and a recruiter could come on your website and just start chatting with you. I did this just now. Now it took me about five minutes to set up my cloud phone system, System. It's kind of stupid easy. And then adding my live chat to WordPress took just a few moments. Check it out. Do you see that at the bottom right? Chat icon, because they have a WordPress plugin and it took no time at all. I keep saying that, but that's literally what it took. Say, hey, tell me about tuples. And then bam, looking back at my 3CX web client, there's the chat right there. Tuples are stupid. And I'm helping my client learn about tuples. They don't only have a web client, they've got a client for your phone, Android and iOS. They've got a desktop client. It's stupid how awesome this is, and it's kind of crazy that they're giving it away for free for up to 10 users. Check it out, link below. Anyways, back to tuples and how stupid they are. I'm just kidding, they're actually pretty cool. That's what I learned. I asked Google again, and I asked my Discord. And here's what I learned, two things. Number one, the fact that tuples are mutable means they're faster than lists. Like, let me show you. Demonstration time. Using a tool called Timeit, we're gonna see how fast Python can create, how many did I say? Two, how many zeros are here? One million lists and one million tuples. Ready, set, go. The results are in, and it's obvious. 1.43 seconds for a list, and 0.13 seconds for a tuple. Dude, that made a list cry. But now I'm sure you're wondering, why is a tuple faster than a list? They're doing the same thing, right? No. And it's back to mutability, our favorite word. And it has to do with storage. Because a list is mutable, you can change it. It's stored in two blocks of memory to allow for new data, change data. Whereas a tuple, it's stored in one block of memory. It's not gonna change. And now I know, in our example, this little millisecond difference in time, doesn't seem like a big thing, but in large bulky programs, that could be time, save, money, save. So okay, at this point, I'm kind of convinced. I get it, tuples are pretty cool, they're fast, and I like fast. But now into point two as to why we use tuples, and that's why, why do we use tuples? What's the use case? When am I going to need data that can be changed? And for that, I asked, Google and my Discord, and I got fantastic answers. I found a really great answer on Stack Overflow, and it has to do with the types of data you might want to store in a list versus a tuple. In a list, you'll want to store what's called homogenous data. That's just kind of fun to say. Go ahead and say it, homogenous. For example, a list of names. All strings, the same type of data. List of coffees, list of YouTubers. These are examples of data within a list that we might add to, change, remove. But in tuples, you might use heter heter heterogeneous data. 
I can't say that. So I might have one tuple called YouTuber, and it would contain data about a YouTuber. Name, subscriber count, how many does John Hammond have now? Woo, 519,000, way to go John Hammond. And the types of videos he makes. Hacking, heterogeneous data, did I say it right the first time or second time? That felt really good. It's all different, but it's all data pertaining to a certain YouTube. Basically, it's how we're grouping our different types of data. And when you're working with SQL libraries in Python, you're actually kind of forced to use tuples. They often return tuples when you use things like fetch one, fetch all, and similar methods. And thank you, Labrette, in my Discord. And by the way, if you haven't joined my Discord, check it out. Super helpful, amazing people in there. That'll help you on your Python learning journey. And Granudo also points out that you wanna use a tuple for kind of read once data, quick stuff, and function returns for faster loading speed. We'll talk more about functions later. So okay, I get it. Tuples have their place, they're a thing. I might start using them. Probably not, but they're also kind of weird. Let me show you some weird things you can do with them. Actually, this one's kind of cool. You can unpack a tuple. So for example, let's, we have this tuple here. I'll call it Network Chuck. I'll have it equal my name, my age, and my favorite drink, coffee. I can unpack this and assign it to multiple variables all at once by doing this. I'll create three variables, name, age, drink, and have that equal the tuple network chuck. And that legit made three separate variables and I've packed it as long as you have them in the correct order. Let me print all of them real quick. Print name, print age, and print drink. It's pretty cool, right? Which by the way, you can do the same thing with list. So just now you know, it's not unique to tuples, but I hadn't talked about it yet. I wanted to show it to you. Now also tuples are kind of weird. You probably saw this coming because they have a weird name. It's like tuple and I don't even know how to say it right. Is it tuple or tuple? I don't know. Comment below. You probably don't know this. You don't actually need to use parentheses to make a tuple. <laughs> Seriously, watch this. Totally a tuple. So I'm gonna name this thing equals one. And then to make it a tuple, I don't need parentheses. All I have to do is just add a comma. I don't even need more than one piece of data. <laughs> watch if I print the type of that data. It's a tuple, <laughs> which is so weird. So you actually need parentheses. All you need is a comma. Like, hey, I've got multiple pieces of data, psych. So yeah, it's weird. And there's more weird things. You can easily turn a tuple into a list, list into a tuple. You can put a list inside a tuple. You can put a tuple inside a list. You can put a list inside a tuple inside a tuple inside a, inside a list inside a tuple inside a list. And finally, let's make one more tuple. Stuff you have to do. Like, comment, subscribe, and look, that's a tuple. It's immutable. You can't change it, so now you have to do it.